In this video, I'm going to try and explain in simple and easy to understand ways how you can find the oxidation state of transition metals in coordination compounds. And to do this, we're going to run through a series of examples, starting with easy examples and getting progressively more detailed. So the first example is going to be as simple as it gets. So let's look at a really nice, simple example. So you're going to look at this copper compound where you've got four chlorine ligands, and then we've got this number outside that is going to be our overall charge. And we need to look at it step by step into how we can find what the oxidation state of this copper is in this coordination compound. So the first thing we're going to do is call the copper just X. We want to find what the oxidation state is, so we just give it a variable name. Then we look at the next thing. So we've got the chlorine and we've got four of them. So we're going to do four times. And then you have to think, what's the oxidation state of a chlorine? Chlorine's in group seven. And it's obviously going to be a minus one from the chlorine. Then we set this equal to the overall charge. So we get that equals minus two. And then with some simple algebra, we just multiply out the bracket. So x minus four is minus two. And then with extraordinarily simple algebra, just adding four to both sides, we end up with x equals plus two. And therefore our copper is in the two plus oxidation state. And that is how you do that. Now let's look at a slightly more difficult example. So we're gonna deal with slightly more stuff. So this one looks more complicated. It's got more things in there. You've got a chlorine ligand and you've also got an aqua ligand. You've got that H2O. And we're gonna follow the same process and you'll see how this one works as well. So again, we've got the chromium and that's going to be just X. Then we've got the chlorine. We've got two of those. Chlorine is of course minus one oxidation state. So we do two times minus one. Then we add the H2O. And in this case, it's going to be zero because H2O aqua ligand is, is zero. And I'll give you a list at the end of the most common ones so you can instantly just have these for any other problems you're doing. So we're gonna add that. So we've got four times zero and that's going to equal one. So we can simplify that a little bit just to X minus two equals one because the four times zero is gone. Two times minus one is minus two. And we get this very, very simple to solve. Obviously that makes X plus three. So the chromium in this complex is in the oxidation state of three plus. And that's how we do that. Then we're gonna look at another example where we've got some stuff outside of the complex. So what I mean by that is we've got three potassiums and then we've got some complex and we need to know how to deal with this. And it's very simple. So if we look at this and we just use very basic chemistry, you should know that potassium is going to be plus. And obviously, before I put that plus there, this was an overall neutral compound. So we need to balance those out. So we've got three plus charges, and so we need three minus charges to equal that out. So let's look at only the bit with the complex. So we're just going to simplify and take out that piece. Then we can look at this individually and do the same thing. So X is going to be our cobalt. Then we've got fluorine, just like chlorine, it's also minus one. So we get six times minus one is minus three. And so obviously we can simplify that down to X minus six is minus three. And then with some really simple algebra, just adding six to both sides, we end up with the cobalt being in the three plus oxidation state. And so that's how you deal with some stuff outside of your complex. Let's look at another example and put all of this together. And if you can do this example, it means you're starting to really get the right idea. So let's look at this. And I'm gonna spread that out just a little bit to give me some room. So let's put the charges on. So chlorine's obviously minus, we've got three minuses. So we're gonna need a three plus there. So let's now just zoom in in the bit that we care about because we're trying to find out what the cobalt is. Exactly the same way, we're just gonna write this expression here. The ammonia as a ligand is going to be zero. And so we've got X plus zero is plus three. And so the cobalt in this case is in the plus three oxidation state. And so that's how you do it. There's the three examples. And finally, to finish, as promised, I'm gonna show you a list of the most common charges that you get on various ligands so that you are prepared for any problems that you might be doing. So these are the most common ones to come up. So on the left-hand side, you've got all of the ligands that are anionic and you can see the charges shown. So for example, down here, we've got like minus two. These are minus two. The cyanide is, is minus one. And so you've got any of these, these are the charges. And then all of the ones in this list are just neutral. So you just take zero. So I hope this video was helpful to you and clearly explained how you can find the oxidation state of various coordination compounds. If it did help you out, please like and subscribe below. And finally, thank you very much for watching.